as a journalist, I've covered a number of uh, parole hearings. Um, what do you want to change? Do you want them to be not so often? Well, we've achieved that. That's one of the fundamental, of, one yeah, of the right, fundamental right. parts of uh, Marcy's Law, and I think one of the most important is that, uh, I mean, one of the elements of dignity and fairness that the system would provide to victims is that, uh, or family members of victims, is that um, in order to have people serve out their legitimate sentence, um, my mother and I, we had to go to a parole hearing every three to four years mm -hmm. and relive the entire tragic That's event. Great. And it's, uh, there, was no, um, there was no obligation on the system to notify us when the hearings were going to happen exactly. We had to travel at our own expense. And in the case of my mother, she has heart problems. No medical provisions were made. Mm -hmm. You're showing up at Soledad State Prison. It's 100 degrees temperature. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, the first parole hearing, I was, I was having nightmares. And I, I wasn't able to attend. I hadn't yet really my husband dealt. And I mm -hmm. and, but my mother. When one of the That's things that made it very difficult mm -hmm. for her is um, at that point, the, the rights of the prisoners were, were so, you know, so out of balance that if you cried at a parole hearing, they, they warned us, if you cry, then that might give the prisoner grounds to appeal the, you know, the denial. Mm -hmm. And so you can't sit there. They would claim that's prejudicial. So my mother suffered this heart attack. She had to mask it and until she left the prison and mm -hmm. left the prison was rushed to a hospital she was hospitalized for two weeks after that and uh, so I didn't just... go to the next one but then he went mm -hmm. my 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 husband and my son went mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was really difficult mm -hmm. because they had well you can tell that more better than I can what oh, happened it, when you went to the parole hearing? Well, it was, it was you know, we achieved a, a four-year denial of parole, but... Um, That's the most you could get. Yeah, but it was, it was a, a horrible experience. I mean, reliving my... Because in order to achieve that, you need to, you need to relive the tragedy mm -hmm. and the impact it's had upon you. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting there across the table from this guy that, that murdered your sister. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's just a... It, it's a, it's a horrible thing to put a family through. Of course. And of course. so, um, so what? Know, what are the? What are well, the? What happens well, now, now? How often? Well, actually, now parole boards have the ability to deny parole up to 15 years. Okay. And so, um, you look at the travesty of justice that occurred it's with the Manson family. We've had 30 years. We've had 33 parole hearings right. at state expense. That's 33 times that the family has had to relive those gruesome murders. Several of which uh, I've covered. That is in so fact, hard we had the four years. We, 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 in the passage of Marcy's Law, I had the uh, the honor of being sued by two members of the Manson family mm -hmm. because of the parole provisions mm -hmm. in here. They they sued my mother and me for uh, trying to pass Marcy's Law, and so I we had to that fight helped. that in court. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it definitely would. Look, we've got to be perfectly honest with you. We got about three minutes of air time left. Sure. What do you want to say? What do we need to to say to get your message across? I, I think, you know, people, people need, um, if you are unfortunate enough to be a victim of violent crime, which, uh, you know, the sad thing is, as a victim, you know, you don't enlist in that movement, you get recruited. You get recruited by the murderer, and murderers are equal opportunity recruiters. They recruit without discrimination on race, gender, or income mm -hmm. bracket. Um, if you find yourself in that position, um, you need to understand that there is an obligation for the system right now to enforce your rights. You have these, and you should be read your Marcy rights. Mm -hmm. And um, and if I someone is not, what should they do? Um, they 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 should call. Actually, that that has occurred. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, if you just call up the, your local law enforcement agency mm -hmm. or the district attorney and mention Marcy's law, they will snap to attention okay. and they will take corrective okay. action. Right. And in fact, we've had people as part of our supports group actually say, you know, wow, I, I called up and I said, well, what about my Marcy rights? Mm -hmm. And suddenly I get a call from the prosecutor, the investigating officers. And so it, it does have an effect. It's a constitutional guarantee. Mm -hmm. And if they know you, call Justice for Homicide Victims. There you are, of course. We'll have yes. that as well. Um, just very quickly, because we only have about a minute left. Somewhere in Marcy's Law, is, is there something in there that helps ultimately to reduce crime, to eliminate crime, to make sure that, um, well, no, to, to try and make sure that there are no more victims? Like well, your daughter, your one sister. indirect effect is just 
having the ability to have your voice heard at these proceedings, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that has the effect of, of affecting people's release. So there's been numerous cases, um, people that show up as part of um, our, our support group who've had family members killed by people that were out on bail. Mm -hmm. And if those bail hearings, the victims at those bail hearings had their voice heard, that would actually affect yeah, the judge's yeah, decision. Yeah, yeah. Just a few months ago, it doesn't just uh, pertain to a, a murder. This man had beaten up his wife, you mm -hmm. know, into a bloody pulp, mm -hmm. and he was put in jail, and she was not notified when mm -hmm. he was let out, mm -hmm. and the first thing he did was Unfortunately, kill her. unfortunately <laughs> we see that happen too many times, and unfortunately right. also, I've got to go to a commercial break, so let's okay. do that. We'll be back. For more information about uh, all of these things that we've been talking about today, Justice for Homicide Victims, that's their website, www.justiceforhomicidevictims.net. Easier way is simply to point your browser at myfoxla.com. You'll find the link there. How would your lives be different if Marcy's Law had been in effect at the time that uh, your sister or your daughter was murdered and the killer went to trial? It would be wonderful. She was... She wanted to teach handicapped children, um, and she would have been a special ed teacher. Mm -hmm. She would have gotten married and had children. Mm -hmm. and, and if you had been able to, to have the rights that Marcy's Law now guarantees crime victims? She would have oh. not had a heart attack. I wouldn't have had a heart <laughs> that's attack. That was, that's, that's the true. first thing. That's true. And um, you know, we would have been spared incredible anguish in just seeing you know, justice meted out, the, yeah. the sentence right. that he was He given. wouldn't be driving past po my house. Mm -hmm. po possibly. Um, he might have gotten convicted of first degree murder because there were witnesses Definitely. that were intimidated yeah. by him. Unfortunately, we are intimidated by the clock. We're out of time. I thank you so much. And my, I guess after all these years, I, my, you know, my heart goes out to you. Thank you very okay. much. Take care of yourselves. Or, thank you. And take care of yourselves at home too. And don't forget our website there that you can uh, go to that link. We'll see you next week.